What's happening everybody? Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to be checking out Jimin's brand new single that just dropped, Set Me Free Part 2, which makes me have some questions here. Is there a Set Me Free Part 1? Not to my knowledge, except for on Suga's uh, mixtape or second album, if you can call it, D2. Uh, there's an interlude that he does uh, towards the end of the album. I think it's like the ninth track or so uh, called Interlude, Set Me Free. Now, I don't know if there's any correlation between these two tracks, but Jimin has basically said this is part two. You know, it's in the title. Uh, so I wanted to re-listen to um, the August D interlude, Set Me Free, and see if there's any sort of correlation I could find between the two of them, if there's any meaning. Hey, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I'm grasping at straws here, but there, this has to mean something, right? <laughs> I don't know. Now, uh, be forewarned, I've, I've, I've literally done nothing with this album. Uh, I know that there's some teasers out there. I haven't really seen the teasers. Um, or maybe I saw the first one, but there's a part two that I haven't seen. And uh, normally I would wait for BTS Sunday to do that and do a live reaction with everybody. Uh, and normally I'd even do this on Sunday, but honestly, curiosity got the best of me. Uh, this song just dropped about an hour ago. I got home late from work and uh, I just have to check it out. Uh, so I'm going to do it right here, right now. Let's uh let's let's revisit August D's interlude first and then let's see if I can see any similarities between the two tracks here. Here we go. Send me free. Sugar Sings. Driven guitar with the muted acoustics. Damn, I hope he plays this live. Okay, so there it is. Uh, it's been a while since I've heard that. I've listened to the D2 album a couple times. Um, and uh, yeah, I've always really enjoyed that interlude. I love the spatial awareness of it. Uh, but honestly, this song is, I don't want to say melodramatic, but it's dramatic on its own um, for some of the subject matter. If I remember correctly, this song has something to do with depression in one way, say, like in one way, shape, or form. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember the stream where I did this uh, and it was explained to me, but I believe. It, yeah, it's it's about how it can kind of sneak up on him and like some days are good and some days are bad and there's no real rhyme or reason for any of it. And I'm literally just uh, touching the tip of the iceberg with that one there. Um, yeah, okay, so I don't know if that's going to have anything to do with, you know, Jim and Set Me Free Part 2, but I figured it was worth listening and it was worth kind of diving back into this before we get into Jimin's. I don't know why he would continue a song that was by Suga, um, or it might not be correlated in one way, shape, or form. <laughs> anyway, we're going to find out right now. Let's pull this up. I am beyond excited for this one here, guys. All right, here it is. Jimin's Set Me Free Part 2, the official music video. Oh, and it already has 2 million views from one hour ago. Oh, man, you guys are killing it with the streaming. All right, here we go.
tense. Oh, it's so schizophrenic. Isn't it an anthem? Dude, 100% celebratory. I love the choreography. Jim and Twang, man. I'm digging it, dude. It's getting creepy. Is that Jimin? He's in white now? Like he shed some kind of skin or something? Set me free part two. Holy macaroni. Okay. This is not what I was expecting at all. Uh, first off, it, it's kind of hard to, to see. You know, between, you know, Suga's interlude and, and this part two here, there's not really many similarities um if from tone to texture to melody to anything really um but there is some similarities in some of the messages and letting go and just like celebrating one part of the life and, and moving on to something else uh i say some similarities that way and i'm kind of glad that it wasn't um part of me was kind of worried that he was going to just sample something from sugar uh and possibly put his own you know variations to it but it really wasn't like that it feels like a complete and total shift from both these songs. But in one way, it also feels like it kind of picks up a little bit as to where the other song left off. And I think, hopefully I'm right on this. Let me show you the very tail end of this one here, okay? And I want you to pay attention to the frequency. Or, you know what, maybe that's too confusing. Just pay attention to the bass. Listen to how it all kind of hisses out and how the next song comes in. And this is what makes me think it's like a true continuation. Let's listen. <laughs> Fades out. There's no bass on anything um, except for his voice. I can take it back a little bit further so you can really hear it. Send me free. 
Okay, everything, all the instruments drop. You just hear a little bit of echo, and then it kind of just fades right out on um, that note. And whereas this one starts, let me see if I can find exactly the first note that comes in, because it is a little, it almost seems a little off key. It's a choir, but it's it's like modulated in such a way that like makes it sound a little creepy. Hopefully you can hear it when it comes right in. No, we just get hit right with that note. Is it the same note? <laughs> it's the same fucking note, dude. Okay. All right. Okay. Interesting. I love the giant organ too. Okay, before we go and listen to this again, I just wanted to test that out. Sorry, I'm doing this in real time here, guys. All right, if you want to know what it, uh, <laughs> this is the way you have to do it, I guess. Um, okay, so that's interesting. It there is, there's definitely a uh, there's definitely a jump, obviously, because there's a fade out and just an echo as to just like uh, just it's just being hit right away with the the, the wall of sound that we get from um, <laughs> from Set Me Free Part Two. Yeah, it's kind of spooky though, right? It's a little on the spookier side. We got the choirs. We have that 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 really massive church organ. We have the modulation. We have the vocal modulation. You know, speaking of vocal modulation, this is interesting with this little jam here because, um, you know, I think Jimin has one of the more distinctive voices in all of BTS. I think you can instantly hear him be like, okay, that's Jimin. He might as well just trademark his style of voice. Um, but he he went ahead and, and, and worked with... Um, some sort of vocoder or something with a lot of this track, which was interesting, especially with the rapping and everything. Um, but my favorite parts is when we get that classic Jim and twang. I don't think we really need those extra effects, um, but he, whatever he's trying, he's experimenting and he's doing his own thing. And uh, th that's great on its own. But yeah, sonically, this is different. This is not exactly what I was expecting at all. <laughs> it's an anthem. I'm going to go ahead and just say it. it's an anthem. It has a different feel to it. Yes, it's kind of spooky, but at the same time, like it feels positive in some kind of way it feels i don't know like like it, like it's a good thing like we're moving forward in the right kind of way although some of the lyrics makes me second guess that statement <laughs> you know celebrate who i was but be happy for the new thing you know i don't think he is necessarily talking about you know being glad that he's outside of bts and that he's moving on from that and now he can finally be himself i don't think that's what it is at all um i think he's just onto a different chapter and this is just a different way of uh, celebrating it from a, a lyrical perspective, I guess. That's kind of what I pulled from it. But what's really exciting to me about this song is the sound design and and honestly, the choreography. I never thought I'd be a choreography guy, but this is some really wild and, and intricate uh, schizophrenic <laughs> movements. Let's, let's go through and listen to this one more time, and I'll break what I can down, and uh, we'll continue. This choreography is really cool. I got a good time. Yeah, time to get mine. Hammers me roll. Hell is it night. So really just a little bit of compression on his vocals and, you know, maybe like a slight little delay here and there, maybe some layering. Uh, but this is a very new... Uh, Jim and Twang. It's, it's something that I'm not used to. So he's trying something new here, even with the opening set, uh, opening uh, phrasing. And he's a Hennessy man. <laughs> I did not know that. We're learning today. Ops. What the hell are ops? Like black ops? See, right here, we get that classic Jim and Tang, like twang. I don't know if it does it to you guys, but it kind of just makes my insides melt. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. There's just something very distinct about his twang, about his phrasing and his delivery that just like I have not found anywhere else. And he could like literally trademark it or he doesn't even need to because you instantly hear it. And you're like, OK, that's that's just Jim and. It's actually kind of soulful. Going insane to stay sane. His, like,
like his tone works so well with a horn too. I think that's why he did a lot of the orchestrations here or why he's going with them here. It's just something about like that piercing and like that just like slight bit of bass that you get from a brass instrument. It just works so well with his voice. He like cuts through it, you know, but like he can still almost like harmonize with it in a way. It's not a true harmony or anything, but it's just an instrument that works very well with his instrument, which is his voice. <laughs> this bar blew my mind. <laughs> Doesn't it sound better clean? Doesn't it sound better clean with the classic Jimmy Twang? I feel like he could have rapped without that, but I'm not I'm not here to judge his performance here. I think he's trying to go for um, you know, a complete um <laughs> a complete deterioration from you know our reality what we know in the song what we feel comfortable with it, it basically just kind of shatters from verse to verse it doesn't feel like it's the same thing moving forward it very very much is a drop and i hate to reference sugar once again but think of shadow you know what i'm talking about with shadow when all of a sudden he starts coming in with that crazy rap and it's just you know like a shadow talking to him or something i forget the angle of that that whole um story but it has that kind of vibe. It reminds me of that just a little bit. But I just love it when his natural tones come out and just shine. You're like, oh, there it is. Forget, forget. Going what a wild look too with the writing on his body. All right, first off, who's mocking this man? Is anybody still mocking this man? Anybody in their right mind still mocking this man? <laughs> like, who, what, what kind of audacity do you have to mock this man? <laughs> how, how, do you, how do you make fun of this man when it's like, no. It's just, the dude has accomplished so much. He is so freaking talented. Like, there's just, uh, it, to mock this man is just so unbelievably just, like, ass backwards and blind of me. Like, blind to think that that can happen. Like, what? <laughs> like, I, I, how do you even get to that point? Like, it shouldn't enrage you, but to me, it's almost like funny. I'm like, how How can you, if you know anything about him and you know anything about his personality and just like, honestly, like a, the sweetest angel he is with like everybody and like, like that alone will like make you like respect this dude. And then you add the talent on top of that. And then you add the work ethic on top of all of that. And like, if you know that and you're still mocking this man, like, uh, how insecure are you? <laughs> like, come on, man. Interesting layering here as well. I like like the slight staccato on the back. It's not actually more choir. It's actually it sounds um, some like some sort of synthesized instrument, but uh, it, what, that has a voice tone to it. So it kind of uh, encompasses this like choir type of uh, feel. I like that. I think that's interesting. That's neat. It keeps the the progression of the beat, beat moving forward. Interesting. So this part here, okay, so now we're really starting to modulate here. We're getting like the 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 very high notes on that um, ugly church organ. You know, the sound is widening. And it's interesting as that happens because his voice is actually shrinking. And they're doing that by taking the bass out of it. They're adding some drive to it. They're making it sound even more modulated. Like it's coming through some sort of like, I don't know, just like imagine like a, a telephone that's like really buzzing in your ear. So it's like, you know distorted in some kind of way it kind of has like that type of sound to it but it's interesting how they kind of play with the frequencies here with like shortening and widening the sound and it almost feels like it's going off key but it's just because we're getting so many so many high tones oh my god okay so they lift them up here and i cannot help but think <laughs> i cannot help like think a little bit black swan i don't know um i, I kind of get that vibe um, maybe, maybe it's just me, but I get that kind of feeling here and look at everybody. They're all looking at something too. It's not like they're lifting him up and looking at him and like praising him. It's like, they're all looking at like 
this thing in the sky is and, and Jimin looks like he's being like sucked up in an alien spacecraft or something. It's a cool frame. Actually, I kind of want to save this for my desktop. <laughs> yeah, no bass at all to his voice. Wide it back out. The dude is just an artist. The dude is just an artist through and through. Yeah, man. I, I it, The song is not what I was expecting. Um, but I don't, I don't really know exactly what I was expecting. This is like his first little step out on his own. This is his first, you know, uh, he had a good amount of creative freedom when it came to BTS, but he still had to have the other guys in the back of his mind. He still had to be thinking about six other dudes and what they were going to do and what they were bringing to the party. Um, and he's a considerate guy, you know, and... Um, even if there is something written, like it might be changed a little bit to suit somebody else better. And I don't know. I'm excited for him. I'm really happy for him. And I'm very excited to see where the rest of this album goes. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised with this tune. Yeah, it's not too bad at all. It's artsy. Uh, it's got some great vocal lines. It's got some really, really interesting effects. And uh, as for if it ties together with Suga's thing, I don't know. But I'm seeing some similarities in some of their writing styles, which is... Kind of cool to see. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for me here today. Uh, I'm going to end this recording and I'm going to watch this like 15 more times. And um, yeah, if you haven't already, um, please consider liking and subscribing. And more importantly, if you're into the whole streaming thing, you can go over and obviously continue to stream this, show Jim and some support and um, really just show him that like, you know, we love and care and we appreciate him. And um, we're, we're looking forward to more of his work. You know, let's just give him some good vibes. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for me. Hope you have a, a wonderful night, and I'll see you all real soon. Bye-bye.